spoke those words, he was speaking in faith. When he spoke and asked the woman for water and when he asked her for bread, he was relying on what Yahuwah said he would do. Listen. Verse 12. And she said, as Yahuwah, your almighty, your Allah lives, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel. And a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son. That we may eat it and die. You know, how many, it's, it's something. How many of you so-called leaders out there who say you represent our Heavenly Father? If you came into contact with a poor woman such as this, how many of you? would even consider to abide with her. Do you hear me? This woman was poor. But that didn't move all Yahoo did it. Because he believed in what Yahuwah said. That he would command her to sustain him. Listen, verse 13, and all Yahu said unto her, fear not. Thank you, my father, my king. Doesn't that sound like what Yahushua said? Doesn't that sound like what our heavenly father spoke through Yahushua? Whenever problems presented themselves, Yahushua said through the power of his heavenly father, he said, fear not. And all y'all who said unto her, fear not, go and do as you have said, but make me therefore a little cake first and bring it unto me and after make for you and for your son. Can you see Yahushua? See, my brothers and sisters, if we are obedient and if we really trust our heavenly father and his son. And when he moves through us or we witness him moving through someone regarding our situations that we are going through, if we are able to sacrifice and to be obedient, do you realize that you are actually sacrificing and being obedient to Yahushua himself and his heavenly father? So this was not an arrogant statement by the Nabai, by all Yahu. Listen, verse 14, for this says Yahuwah, the almighty of Yashvel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that Yahuwah sent rain upon the earth. So Yahuwah made it possible for him to be sustained until his purpose was accomplished. Verse 15, and she went and did according to the saying of all Yahuwah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. So it was a necessity. Thank you, my father, my king. It was a necessity for the prophet to be where he was supposed to be. When he first encountered the woman, she was in a state of lack and poverty. And many of you who were saying that you were really sent by him, if you was in this situation, would have looked the other way or turned the other cheek. You hear me? But he had to be obedient. Do you see this now? So because he was obedient and because she was obedient, Yahuwah was able to work and they were to be sustained. Verse 16, and the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of Yahuwah, which he spoke by all Yahuwah. So his purpose was accomplished in this aspect. Verse 17, and it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick and his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. That's powerful. My brothers and sisters. That's a challenge, isn't it? 
It was poverty that was impeding the woman and her son. And the prophet was brought to her. He represented Yahushua after his kind. He represented the salvation of Yahuwah there to save them from death, from hunger. Now that time has went by, their needs have been met. But yet now another challenge presents itself. The son died. Verse 18. And she said unto all Yahu, what have I to do with you? O you man of Aliyah. Are you coming to me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? What a question. And this is something we need to look at and analyze in our own lives. When our Heavenly Father through His Son sends a significant purpose. Do you see this? And we are saved in certain instances and yet challenges presents itself. We have to remember what he did for us. It's not that this woman is evil, but she forgot for a time. The emotion, of course, her losing her son. Blame the prophet. You see this? But listen. Verse 19, and he said unto her, give me your son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. Picture this now. Isn't it similar? What Yahushua experienced. Isn't it similar what Kapha experienced? Death has taken place. And yet, the miracle of Yahuwah it's getting ready to be produced after its kind. Verse 20. And he cried unto Yahuwah. Thank you, my father, my king. Can you see Yahushua being expressed through all Yahuwah? See, Yahuwah the Almighty is not just going to hear. Or respond. He hears all things, but he's not going to have respect for just any man who just merely calling on to him, just crying to him. To call on Yahuwah and for Yahuwah, our Heavenly Father, to respond to you as something special. Do you hear me, my brothers and sisters? When you were led to pray and when you ask our Heavenly Father and when he responds to you, that's a blessing within itself. Because our Father doesn't have to look in your direction. The scriptures attest that Yahuwah, will, he does not have to hear you if he desires. There are certain points in the scriptures where he said, I will not hear them. Even though they cry unto me, I will not hear them. So for our Heavenly Father, in his integrity, to sit there and to listen is a blessing. For all y'all who to cry to him signifies that there was someone inside of him. There was something special that was inside of him that was getting ready to be expressed. Listen. Verse 20 again. It says, And he cried unto Yahuwah and said, O Yahuwah, my Allah, my Almighty, have you also brought evil or trouble upon the widow with whom I sojourn by slaying her son? He questioned it. Do you see this? And we question from time to time, don't we? Yahushua. Even there was times in his life. Thank you, my father, my king. Please guide me correctly. There was times when I, our Messiah, when he cried out to his father. As far as the cup, when he said, let this cup pass from me. But yet... He said, not my will, but your will be done. Verse 21. And he stretched himself upon the child three times. And cried unto Yahuwah and said, O Yahuwah, my almighty, 
I ask you, let this child's soul come into him again. That's powerful. To ask our Heavenly Father this request. This is something. Let's see what our Heavenly Father does, what he allows to happen. Through his son. Verse 22. And Yahuwah heard the voice of all Yahuwah. And the soul of the child came into him again. And he revived. Thank you, my father, my king. How many of you really believe that? There's people dying every day. He had to have the mind of Yahuwah to operate in this manner. If it was not the will of Yahuwah, then his words would just go into the air. But for his words to, for him to speak these words, thank you, my master, and for our father to hear him and to allow the soul of this child to come again, there's something special here. The child revived. And all you who took the child and brought him down out of the chamber, into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And all you who said, See, your son lives. And the woman said to all you who, Now by this I know that you are a man of Aliyah, and that the word of Yahuwah in your mouth is true. Not only, thank you, my father, my king, not only did she acknowledge that he was a man of the Almighty. But she acknowledged by the power of our father, our king, by this miracle taking place, that the word of Yahuwah in his mouth was true. That's a revelation within itself. There were many false prophets, many false leaders during that time who spoke the word of Yahuwah. But the word of Yahuwah that was in their mouth was not true. Do you see this, my brothers and sisters? When were we today? When were we today? Learn these things. And not just look at this as a mere story, a mere book. But to really begin to operate. As he leads us to. As we continue to grow and mature. All of us are. This is a journey that we all are on brothers and sisters. It's not just merely reading. As you read it you feed off the truth. But also applying it. Be Allowing Yahushua to be expressed through you. That's the key, my brothers and sisters. If there's any, thank you, my father, my king. If there's any differences, or if there is any trespasses that has occurred, we as his children have to be willing to reconcile as Yahuwah leads us. If there's a fault and the, and the person who has done the fault has been pricked to the heart and as they come to repent, do you hear me, my brothers and sisters? Then you, as the person who is hearing them repent, need to forgive them and to be restored. You see this, my brothers and sisters. Continue. This goes for the whole body of the Messiah. For my precious leaders out there. Continue to stand strong. And to lead us properly. When Yahuwah gives revelation. 
as he commands you, ex continue to express it. And to not be afraid to speak what he has commanded you to speak. Do you see this? And for the assembly, we need to not only hear what they are saying, but to apply it. We are to examine the fruit to make sure that it's really coming from Yahuwah. But when we know this, then we are to listen. And we are to express in our own lives. Because if you're just sitting there just listening, and you're not making an effort to do anything, or to progress in your own personal life, that have been given to you by our Father and our King. Then what's the point? We're seeing the foolishness that's going on. As our Father and our King allowed me to speak to you. For people who are saying that they really called and they're not. We're not seeing Yahushua after his kind. You see what's happening on the television sets? You've seen what happened in these false churches. You're not seeing the expression of what you're reading about. The man, Yahushua, who people ignorantly call Jesus majority of their life and all these other foolish names out here. That man who walked the earth. That man who's still sitting by his heavenly father. Who's waiting for us to do what he commanded him to. He com Thank you, my father, my king. He commanded us to do what he and his heavenly father has required. You don't, you're not seeing him being expressed. You hear me, my brothers and sisters? We all really need to meditate as he leads us. And to really think. To read the scriptures. To read more about Yahushua. To have his character. To learn of him and his heavenly father. To have our father's character. How are they going to be expressed through us. When we're not really. Taking their characteristics seriously. Do we believe that he's going to provide for us. Even those of you who are leaders. Do you believe that our father. And his son is going to provide for you. Even though things are rocky. According to his word, he provided for the prophets. He provided for our ancestors. Will he not provide for you if you're really doing what he commanded you to do? So I encourage you by the encouragement of our Heavenly Father, continue to grow as that precious fruit that you are. Continue to be renewed day by day. If there's errors, repent of it. And if you come to them sincerely, they'll listen. Him and his son. I expect to see greater revelations from you, from the leaders of Yahuwah. To teach not only the assembly, but to also me. As I learn. From our Heavenly Father and His Son inside of your human vessels. That you are to be true examples. You are to be Yahushua after His kind. You are to express what He expressed. Which is His Father, Yahuwah. Anybody can talk. And this warning goes for myself. If we're not doing what He said, then it's of nothing. You may have the word of Yahuwah. But if the word of Yahuwah is in your mouth, is it true? My brothers and sisters, I love you all. And continue to follow him and his son. And when that time comes, he'll make a way for us. I love you all. Be blessed.